Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This is The Real Nathan Daly, and I'm here to give you an update in reference to the Montgomery Brawl. I know everybody's seen it. First of all, I had the best video, right? And YouTube shut it down, you guys. We were at 350,000 views on the channel. It was just popping. Everything was growing. We were doing good. YouTube hit me with the politics. It's all good, right? It's all good. It's all part of the game. Listen, but I appreciate you guys for watching um, sharing that video, subscribing to the channel. We got a lot of new subscribers behind that video. So listen, welcome to the channel. Shout out to my members as well. I thank you guys and I appreciate you. The channel could not grow without the support of everybody. So listen, I want to give you a quick update, but this time we're going to talk about the charges. We're going to talk about the investigation. I'm going to share with you how these things work and that how this is not going to have a happy ending for a lot of our heroes. <laughs> In reference to this situation so let me explain to you why i say that as you see in the thumbnail a lot of the the main characters uh the main villains the thugs in this ordeal have been arrested right i call them the three stooges right so all of them have been arrested um and they bonded out but we're going to talk about additional charges we're going to talk about who else can get charged why they're going to get charged and why this situation is very unique but before we get into that please like comment share Subscribe to the channel. Join the channel if you see value in it. I really appreciate your support. Let's dive into this clip, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts. All right, let's get to it. Montgomery's Riverfront Brawl are now in custody. The final two turned themselves in earlier this evening. We also now have mug shots of all three. Take a close look at your screen. 25-year-old Zachary Shipman, 23-year-old Alan Todd, and 48-year-old Richard Roberts, who turned himself in yesterday, are all facing misdemeanor charges of assault. People are still talking nationwide about this fight, which broke out Saturday when a group of people on a private pontoon boat refused to make room for the city-owned Harriet II riverboat to dock, according to investigators. The fact that the two sides were of different races may be one reason it's getting so much national news coverage. Tonight, CNN is citing city court documents that say the mother of one of the victims alleges a racial slur was used during the fight. However, Mayor Stephen Reed has said the FBI told him they did not have enough information to consider this a hate crime. And Montgomery Police Chief Daryl Albert says the altercation was not racially motivated. All right, so let's dive into it, right? I want you guys to, to follow me with this. I'm like, this is how it works. You can say things that are insulting. You could say disparaging statements to people. It doesn't necessarily mean that the actions that you are committed to doing are rooted in racism, right? Uh, sometimes it's as simple as I'm saying this because I'm going to insult you. I'm saying this because I know it's offensive. Saying the word doesn't make you a racist, right? Let's just be completely honest. If we really just break it down what it means. Being racist is a mentality. It's a mindset. Um, being an asshole is a personal choice, right? Being rude, being disrespectful, being unprofessional. Saying words that you know are offensive doesn't within itself make you a racist person, just makes you an asshole. So what they are saying is this altercation was not rooted in racism. It wasn't motivated in racism. Um, how did they find that out? How did they determine that? Through the investigation. When you start interviewing people, you guys, this is how it works. You're looking for a motive, you know? The investigators are asking questions. I'm assuming everybody's cooperating. And they're looking at what was the intent behind the action. And if that intent isn't racially motivated, you don't have a hate crime. You know, just because you said hateful things or you you said things that a person can take as being racist doesn't necessarily mean the crime or the act was rooted in racism and so this is where a lot of people are going to have a hard time separating the two listen I, I know and i think when i have these conversations these are sensitive topics they're sensitive discussions people especially um black people don't like to hear me trying to break these things down but you guys, it, it matters. You know what I mean? It matters. You'll be surprised. Racism is the examination of a person's mind and the examination of a person's heart. And those things are very hard to actually dive into. You need a lot more. 
right? You can have a racist person and they do something that is criminal against another person. But if you can't properly connect the evidence to their mindset, then you're not going to be able to prove it. You're not going to be able to hold any weight. Um, they know how this thing transpired, right? One could argue, listen, and I want to make a correction too, that I was calling the gentleman a security guard. He's not a security guard. Um, he is a co-captain, Damien Pickett. He's a co-captain of the actual boat. Um, and so we know he asked these guys to move their boat. They refused. One could argue and say, well, maybe they didn't want to take orders from a black person. Okay, that could be true. Or it could just be they didn't want to take any orders because they're entitled, right? They have this idea that you're not going to tell me what, what to do because, you know, I pay taxes, whatever, you know, this, this whole thing. So I get it, right? But I'm saying in reference to wanting to charge somebody and having enough evidence to charge them with a certain crime, you need a little bit more. You know, I know a lot of people aren't happy about that. A lot of people also brought up during the brawl that they're like, hey, the black guy was arrested first. You know, and they say, well, that's racist. Of course, I'm not going to arrest the white person first. You guys, that's not how it goes, right? And so let me explain to you how it works. For those who know, I'm a 13-year law enforcement veteran. And so I'm giving you what it actually looks like in real life. When I would come on scenes on fights like that, when there's people fighting massive fights, you guys, I know we don't get involved until people get tired. As long as there's no guns or weapons involved, I kind of let people wear each other out. And then I take out my pepper spray and I just hold it over the crowd and I spray everybody, wait for them to fall over and roll around. And then I proceed to handcuff, right? In this situation, they, you want to remove the person that's most aggressive that you see in the moment, right? Remember, everybody was detained. They were brought back for interview and they were all released. A lot of people feel some kind of way about that. Oh, you see the white folks beating on the guy. They should have been arrested right then and there. When you have a complex case, you guys, it, it's just not that simple. Things have to be investigated, therefore, so that you can actually apply the appropriate charges to each and every person. What you don't know is if you charge somebody wrong the first time and they bond out, it's very difficult to kind of go back and recharge them with something else. Or if you charge them wrong and they didn't do anything wrong and they were justified in what they did, then now you have a lawsuit on your hands, right? So it's there's this due diligence that's required, especially when you have a high profile case like this. You don't want to make any mistakes. It's better to investigate, collect all the evidence, let everybody go. And then after you conclude the investigation, take out your warrants, contact them and tell them to turn themselves in. You guys, it's done all the time. White, black, Asian, Hispanic. This is not unique, right? This is not racist, how they handled it. So there's a lot of statements going around on social media saying that this is racist, the way the police investigated. That is false, all right? False, absolutely false. This is consistent. I have watched murderers come into an interview, you guys, and I had to take them, put them in my car, and drive them back to the murder scene because there wasn't enough at the moment. Or people lie and say that they were using self-defense. And then you later find out that that wasn't the case. And then you go back and you have to pick them up. Uh, so sometimes it's just not that clear. Um, and you got to remember, the police have to collect a multitude of videos from different angles, different witnesses. Um, and so it takes a little time. Best believe justice is going to be served. And we are seeing the beginning, uh, the beginning of it. All right. So what we have, we have the three gentlemen who were arrested. I call them the thugs, uh, the, the, the three thuggets. OK, we got Richard Roberts, who's 48 years old. He's charged with two counts of assault. All right. And this is assault in the third degree, which is a person commits the crime of assault in the third degree. If with the intent to cause physical injury to another person, he or she causes physical injury to any person. And so this gentleman's charged with two counts. I believe this is the guy who struck uh, the, the co-captain. And then when the actual, there was a, um, uh, another employee who was coming, he's white male, he was coming to break it up. He then struck him as well. All right. So two counts, Alan Todd, he's 23. He's also charged with third degree assault. Um, Zachary Shipman, he's 25, also charged with third degree assault. Now, they're going to be some of the employees that are going to be charged with assault. So don't get mad. Okay, don't get mad. Don't get angry, guys. That's the name of the game. And let me tell you why that is. Because 
There is a thin line between self-defense and retaliation, right? And though we all enjoyed watching this WWE action brawl, the chair, the body slam, the people's elbow, you know, Aquaman, he's swimming into the action in the fray, there's a good chance he's going to get charged as well. And I'm explaining to you why. Because, again, there's a difference between self-defense and then retaliation. So what is retaliation, you guys? After, and if you remember the video, the co-captain is assaulted by the thugs, right? The thugs are knocking him down. He's holding his own. He's doing his thing. He, he throws up the bat signal, right? People say toss the hat up in the air, right? Well, then you have Aquaman. That's what they call him, Aquaman. He jumps in there. He gets his Michael Phelps in. He arrives to the scene. The fight is over, right? Everybody there, the fight is over. You had a black guy who was running down the ramp. You see him. He's trying to break everything up. He doesn't strike anybody. He's getting pushed. And he doesn't, he doesn't assault anybody in that moment. We're watching this happen. You see another white, a white male. He shows up. He's an employee. And he's trying to break it up. He gets punched, right? So, so you have people breaking it up. Well, the co-captain gets off the ground. He's trying to get some get back. He's walking towards where? Where the boat is. Then you have a woman who's trying to push him off. Like, no, don't go over there. He mushes her out the way, right? In that moment, there is a second fight that happens near the original incident location where you see Aquaman. He's in there doing his thing, right? There's a woman over there. She's trying to hold back. She's in the red. She's trying to hold back. I believe that's her husband or family member or something to the effect. Trying to hold them back. They end up getting back into another physical altercation. I do not know how that started. And then somehow people getting tossed around again, right? Everything sparks back up. Everything sparks back up. We don't know what caused that, that, that spark to hit again in that area. And in that moment, you see people getting body slammed. You see people getting kicked. You see the women getting thrown around based on who initiated that confrontation again is going to be charged. Then there's going to be someone who's going to say, listen, I was defending myself because they started it. He started it and I was defending myself. So when you saw me giving him that three piece combo, it wasn't because I wanted to It's because he was then initiating the assault again. And then what do you have, right? You have the third scene. The third scene is actually at the boat. Right. This is where the boat is at. And this is where you see about four or five brothers. They hop skipping down the dock. Right. You know, when you see brothers do that skip, <laughs> you know, you know, that skip I'm talking about. They do that. That they do that little skip to Malu. You know, it's game time. Right. That's when you see them board the boat. You see, I think there's three white males on the boat and you see there's a discussion. And immediately you see one of the black males go ahead and he went ahead and and put put that uh put that ping pow on him boom right he snuck him in that moment that male right there is being charged with assault right at that point in time why you guys because there was a break there was an actual break within the fray once there's a break and there's a separation anything after that cannot be considered self-defense right you then, you walked over there. The threat was gone. The threat was done. You went over there and then you re-engaged and you didn't have to. Now, some will say that they had to, they had to, right? They had to go back. It was revenge. You're right. It absolutely was. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that in their mind, they didn't think that they were doing a good thing. I'm talking about in reference to the way the law works, right? You can't go back for revenge. You just can't. The law is not going to back you. But but let's talk about that. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, especially with black folks. There are times where we will actually tell ourselves that this is worth going to jail. All right. We'll have this conversation in our in our head and be like, you know what? I'll take a ride for that. You know, I don't mind getting locked up. I'll do two months for that. And you got to be careful when you're dealing with some people out here. They do not care. There are certain things that if you violate me, if you disrespect me, if you violate my pride, if you disrespect my people, my family, people I care about, I'm willing to go to jail. Listen, we've all been there. I've been there, right? I remember I had a situation with my sister. People were bullying her on the bus, some boys. Guess what I did? In my mind, I already calculated that I am willing to go to jail. 
And I showed up, parked right from the bus stop. I got out and I waited. They never got off the bus. In that moment, you guys, we make these decisions, right? And in this moment, they knew, right? When they posse'd up and decided to run down uh, that dock towards where these thugs were at, they knew at that point in time, it's game time. And I guarantee you, if you talk to each and every one of them, they will tell you they would do it again. And listen, I'm not mad at it. What I'm saying is the law is not going to support that, right? The law is not going to support that. I can't tell you how many cases I've worked where I showed that at a crime scene and the guy was like, hey, officer, um, yeah, I'm, I know I'm going to jail, but let me just tell you why I had to put my hands on him. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, listen, I, 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 I'm mad at you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. I get it. So in this case, those guys who went over there to the boat, even though the, the primary aggressors started this entire thing, the moment that you had a pause in the crime and a separation, everything after that becomes premeditated. You knew about it. You saw about it. Okay, we get our get back. So will they be charged? Absolutely, they'll be charged. They'll be charged with assault. You guys, at the end of the day, everybody is probably going to get charged behind this. Everybody. Um, you might not have been charged for the first affray, not the second affray, but you might have been a part of the third and there was no reason for you to be a part of it because the threat had already dissipated. So, um, so that's just kind of like an idea to get you guys to understand when these charges start coming out and you see your heroes getting locked up. All I can say to y'all brothers, take that mugshot with a smile, right? And, you know, stand by your decision. You know, because at the end of the day, in your mind, you felt you were doing what was right. And I don't disagree with you. Um, what those thugs did was unacceptable. And I think that some things are, some things are worth going to jail for, right? It just is what it is. And so I respect it and I understand it. But I want you guys to understand why, when these charges, the rest of these charges come out, understand why they're being charged. Um, what else? What is the, what is the, um, I'm going to talk about my man with the chair, right? That brother's going to jail, period, right? He was flat out wrong, right? Why do I say that? Shorty was already on the ground, right? She wasn't, again, you guys, you just can't beat on people because they're available for you to beat on, right? It doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. You know, you're supposed to use physical force as a way to defend and protect. Um, when a person is defenseless, when you're using force on them, um, especially in a case like this, you are then now jumping into a territory of excessive force. This brother was working the chair. I ain't gonna lie. He was working the chair. And then the lady's just sitting there. She's already slumped out. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, hi, hi. And then he cracks her over the head with it. So, you know, listen, this is, this could have been, let me just say this. Thank God. Thank God. Nobody was seriously hurt. Right. I think, I think it's easy for us to kind of joke about it. You know, a lot of memes, best believe black folks are going to turn this to a holiday. I guarantee you next year, August 5th, there's going to be a massive cookout <laughs> in Montgomery. People are going to turn that place into a, a tourist attraction. All right. So that's just how we get down. So in, in a situation like this, though, what is what what's bad about it? This could have turned out really bad. Right. Someone could have really gotten killed. You had a woman who was getting beat um, by another employee, female employee. And she threw her into the water. He was like, ha, ah, go swimming, right? <laughs> and now that woman lost her job. And listen, this is like what I'm saying. She did an a interview where she was giving her her story. And she was like, you know, they fired me. She was like, I don't care. You don't put your hands on people. I was holding my people down. And she's absolutely correct. And, and again, that goes back to what I was telling her earlier, is that we think differently. You know, black folks, we don't mind losing our job. We don't mind going to jail. If we are standing up for something that we believe in. Um, and that's what you saw, right? That's what you saw at the brawl. Folks was willing to take the ride. Everybody's cooperating. The man with the chair, he turn, he's turning himself in, um, as we know. But people could have died, you know what I mean? And not just the woman who was thrown in the pool, the woman who was hit over the head with the chair, right? Could have caused her some type of spinal injury, neck injury, paralyzed her. You have the woman who's thrown the pool could have drowned. You have the co-captain who could have been paralyzed. He could have been killed. He could have hit his head on, on the ground, rolled off into the water, you know, and drowned. 
And then now you have three white men charged with what? Manslaughter. Murder, actually. So, you guys, though we... I know we, we you know, now that things are kind of dying down behind that, I want us to also reflect on how quickly our lives can change by making poor decisions all the way from the part where we think we're too important to follow instructions to I'm going to defend and protect, which is justified. And then the decisions to retaliate, which ultimately the law doesn't see as justification. And though we have good intentions to help, we can ultimately shift the direction of our future by not thinking things through. Um, at the end of the day, and I said it, I say it again, I said it on the last video, we don't condone violence. I'm about unity. We can't allow these things to happen, right? Um, we gotta do better. We can't allow the media to really fan flames and politicians to fan flames on this idea that black and white people do not like each other, that we cannot love each other, and that we cannot coexist. We absolutely have to dead that narrative. And that's not to say that we don't have racist people. We do. We have racist people, and there's racist people on both sides. We got racist black folks, we got racist white folks, racist Hispanic, and racist Asians. And yeah, right? Everybody has racist people within their culture. It is what it is. Miss me with that black folks can't be racist. Some of y'all are more racist than the people y'all complain about. Um, so dead the double standard. I think that we don't make progress without communicating. And using our hands to talk is not the answer, obviously. So I don't know. What do you guys think? What's a proper solution? How do we, how do we end this racial divide? Now, listen, we're never going to end it. How do we reduce it, right? I think that's really the big question. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. Maybe I'm just too, of a, too much of a nice guy. <laughs> I love everybody. I love everybody, and I recognize that there's evil people in every group. So anyways, like, comment, share, subscribe, you guys. Good night. God bless.